So now that we've set up our authentication strategy, which will take in a username and password and it will return the user's document from the database, we now need to start integrating it with a login form. So what I've just done is in the homepage.pug, which I render for the um, base route right here, um, I've just uh, created a login form right here and it has a username field with the name of username, a password field with the name of password, and it's also got a submit button with the value of login. And what I want to do is once they've signed in, it'll find the user's document from the database and then it will just render this um, signed in page here with welcome and then their name. So uh, if we just take a look at this, we can see that we just have this welcome, please sign in or register and a username box and a password box and then they'll press login and then we'll get this page with a welcome and then their name. What I've also done is, or what I'm going to do is, in the local DB users, which I'm using right here, I'm just gonna insert a document here very quick. And I'm just gonna say username Quincy, and I'm gonna set the password to cat. Again, this is, um, we're not worrying about hashing or anything like that. And I'm just gonna set the name to Quincy, like this. So this will be the uh, user that we're gonna sign in as. Because if we don't have any users on our database, the sign in will obviously fail. So that's what we have right here. So um, the first thing we want to do is, since this form posts to root slash login right here, uh, we want to make sure that we set up a post root for that. So we'll say app.post and the root is slash login. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mount some middlewares to um, allow this um, process that I described earlier to happen. The first thing we need to do is um, grab the username and password fields from our request right here and then put them in the body. Sorry, from the form and then put them in the body. And to do this, we're going to need our good friend body parser. So just do npm install and then do body dash parser like this. And what I'm also going to do here is I've just required it right here. So I've said let body parser equals require body parser. And if we look at package.json now, we can see that it's been installed properly. So what I'm gonna do first of all is just to mount the uh, body parser middleware function. So if you just go to the NPM page of body parser, you can grab it from there. Um, I still can't remember it after using it so many times. The next thing we need to do is mount a passport middleware as well. So now that in our request body, we have the username and password, uh, we need to, tell Passport to then use this authentication strategy and then to find the user document. So the way we do that is we call a method on Passport, Passport, not Password, uh, Passport called Authenticate. And the first argument for this method is, uh, if you look at in, in here, um, it's the name of the strategy. And if you want to find the name of the strategy, um, what I'm just gonna do here is I'll just say console.logPassport. And if I just run the server now, um, we'll get the passport object logged. And if we look at the strategy right here, we have this local strategy, which we set up here, which is the find user document. And the name of the strategy is local. So whenever we create a new local strategy, by default, the name of the strategy will be this local right here. So that's going to be the name of our strategy. So um, where are we at? I'm just going to remove this line because we don't need it anymore. Um, so the name of the strategy is local. And by the way, um, once again, these docs right here, the Passport Hidden Manual, are actually the best way to learn Passport because Passport's actual documentation is actually really, really terrible. I don't understand how anyone can learn anything from it. Um, this is the place to go if you want to find out what these functions does. So the next argument we give it is an options object. And here you can set various options, but the only option that we're gonna set for now is the failure redirect. And this failure redirect um, basically allows us to uh, redirect the user to another route if there was a problem. For example, there's no user with that username or um, the password doesn't match or something like that. And I'm gonna redirect them to the home route, but you can redirect them to a route that maybe displays an error message or something, I don't know. So what will happen so far is, by the way, um, we don't have to worry about the request of body part, Passport will take care of that. So what Passport will do is it'll look in the request body for the username and password, then it will call this find user document and run this function. And if everything succeeds, what will happen is this user right here will get passed to the uh, serialized function, and then the user's ID will be stored into a cookie, 
And then whenever we load any page after that, um, this user ID right here will be used to find the user's document from the database. And then this document right here will be available in every request in the field uh, user. So what I'm gonna just do here is create my own middleware function. I'm gonna say request response like this. And for now, I'm just going to log the user field to check if we have it. So I'm gonna say, um, console.log and then I'm going to log request.user right here. Um, so again, yeah, we should have the user document available in the uh, request user field. Um, one thing that we quickly need to tweak is um, a couple of videos ago I said that um, when we call the mongo connect method in the callback function it returns a database as a second argument. And this is not true um, from MongoDB 3.0. 0.0 onwards, I think. Um, it actually returns a, an instance of a client, I guess, which has access to our database. So this is actually a client right here. And since we're looking for um, a database instance to call our collection methods on in here and here, uh, we need to make sure we set this DB properly. And the way we can do that is we'll just say here, let DB equals, and then we can call a method on this client called DB. And then simply we just give our database name um, which in my case is called a uh, local DB. And what this will do is it'll assign this DB to an instance of a database that we can call methods like um, collection on. Otherwise this part will fail right here. So now that we've done all of that, let's see what happens. So if I do node server.js, and I'm just gonna make sure that I empty the cache and do a hard reload here. And if I put Quincy here, and then I put a password like cat, and I log in. Um, this page will hang and that's okay. But if we look at the request.user field, we have this user document that we've obtained right here. And this also has the name and ID fields, which we never specified. So we know that it's definitely got it from this database right here. And now we have access to that. So what the next step to do is to make sure that we render our page. I'm just gonna stop this before it causes my computer to slow down. Um, so what I'm just gonna do now is I'm gonna say, uh, um, we're gonna render the um, signed in page. So I'm gonna say re response.render. And remember for the render method, we can just give the name of a pug page in our pages directory. And I'm just gonna say signed in. And this has to be a string. So it's the signed in page. And remember that the signed in page uh, looks for a name variable to render. So I'm just gonna set this name variable to request.user. And remember in the name, we have the document name field right there. So we can just do that. And if I save that and I run this again, and we do uh, empty cache and hard reload. And if I put Quincy here, and then I put the password, which is cat, and I press login, we can see that welcome and then the name has been returned right here. And in a practical case, you can have the name here, you can have a bio, maybe a link to a profile picture or something, and you can use this information to render um, a full profile. So something else I quickly wanna show you as well is if you go back here, and I'm gonna empty it again, uh, just to make sure that this cookie doesn't mess with anything, um, and we do Quincy here, and then I put a wrong password in like dog and submit that. We can see that just re it runs the failure redirect and just returns us back to this root. If I put a na another name like, I don't know, um, Ryan or something, and then I put another password in, it does the same thing. So if a username and password is wrong or something, it will just redirect us back to this um, failure root right here. Um, so that should be everything to do here. And again, I'll once last time, I'll walk through the logic of this code. So when we submit this um, form, body parser will grab the username and password from this uh, these fields right here, and it'll put them in the request body. Then passport will um, run this um, local strategy, which is called local right here. And what this will do is it'll put passport will give it request.body.username or request.body.password here. And then it will find the user from the database and it will be returned as this user right here. And then this user will then get serialized um, in the serialized function. And the ID of the user will be saved to our cookie. And anytime we load a page, 
um, this function will run and we'll get the user ID from our cookie and we'll look in the database and find the user's full document right there. And then this doc right here will be available in every request that we run in a field called request.user. And finally, if there was a problem with the authentication, we'll just be redirected to the um, home route right there. So that's essentially what we have to do for this challenge. So the first thing I'm going to do is because it will take ages and anything on glitch takes a long time to do. I'm just going to npm install body parser, which we'll need later. Um, so the first thing that we have to do is if we look in views and then pug and then uh, index.pug, we can see that we have a login form that posts slash login similar to what we had here. And this has a variable here called show login. So this form will only be rendered if the variable show login is set to true. So we want to make sure that we render the login form here. Um, I'm just going to run refresh here. So what we need to do is basically when we run when we render this pug page, we want to make sure that the show login is set to true. So in server.js, if we come down here, um, we just want to add another variable in here and we want to say show login and we want to set that to true. And if I refresh the page now, it might need to wake up again because it's gone to sleep. Uh, we can see that we've got the login form ready and working. And then remember, this will post to the root slash login. So the next thing we have to do is create the post root for that. So down here, we want to say um, app.post and it's slash login here, which is the route we're posting to. And then we want to get ready to mount um, our body parser middleware, our passport middleware, and then finally our own middleware function. So the first thing I'm just going to do up here is I'm just going to require body parser. So I'll say let body parser equals require, and then, um, oops, require like this, and then body dash parser. So we have body parser. And the first thing I'm going to do is just mount the body parser URL encoded and middleware, just to make sure that in our request body, we have access to the username and password. So I am just going to do that here. I'm going to format it just to clean it up. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to mount. That's actually made it worse, um, weirdly. So the next thing we need to mount is the um, passport middleware. So this will be passport.authenticate. And remember that um, we're using a local strategy. So by default, the strategy name is just local. And we once again want to give a failure um, redirect option. And we just, uh, I think free code camp want us to set this to um, slash. Yeah, so I'm just going to, I'm going to copy it actually, because I don't want to risk it. So we want to just set this uh, failure redirect to just the home route right there. Um, another thing to do is we need to make that tweak that we did with the database. And remember that this uh, returns a client and not a database. So we can just change this to client. And we want to make sure that we set this database or DB field back to the actual database. So we want to say let um, db equals client dot db. And in this project, uh, remember that my database name is uh, advanced node right here. So this is what I want to set this to. So that's advanced node there. So if everything's worked okay now, in the request dot user field, we should have the user username right there. So what we want to do is we have another pug page here called profile, and that's what we want to render. I think, um, yeah, which should redirect to the slash profile. So what we want to do here is say a uh, response dot redirect. And we just want to redirect this to slash profile. Sorry, that should be in our own middleware. So I'm just going to move that um, and then put create a middleware function here. And I'm going to format it just to see if we can get that cleaned up a little bit. Um, and the final thing that we need to do is since we're posting to slash, since we're uh, redirecting to get slash profile, we just need to make sure we set up a get root for that. So we'll say app.get slash profile. And again, we have a middleware with request response. And um, I'm just going to copy the line which we used to render the home page. So that's this right here. And we just want to render instead this time the profile page. 
So let me just paste that in here. And instead of index, um, it's called profile, the pug page. So I'll just change this to profile. Um, and we can get rid of the options object. As far as I'm aware, we don't need it. We might have to give the user, um, should render the, if the authentication was successful. Okay, so that should be everything. So um, let's have a look at what happens. So if I refresh the page now, and I put a username like Quincy, and then I put a login like Cat, remember that um, the advanced node, I haven't created any users as of yet. So it should just redirect us back to the home page. So if I submit that now, um, we can see that we've redirected back to the home page. And um, in the logs, I think, yeah, it should say that the user and then the username attempted to log in. So that should be everything we need uh, for this challenge. So let's go ahead and submit that. And I'm expecting errors already, and we'll go have to go and fix those. Um, no, that seems to have worked, actually. So uh, one last time, what this does is in the slash login, it'll use body parser to make sure that the username and password fields from our form are available in the body. Then Passport will run the local strategy that we created here, and it will give it for the username and password, it'll just give it request.body.username and request.body.password. And then from the database, it'll find that user document. Then what happens is it'll get serialized and the ID will be saved to a cookie. And then every time we load a page, um, since we mounted um, passport.session for all routes, what will happen is that um, it'll use the user ID from our cookie to find the full user document from the database. And it will make that uh, document available in the field of requested.user. But we're not using that. What we've just done is if the login was successful and we don't have the failure redirect to the home route, it will just redirect to the slash profile route, um, which will then render the profile page. That should be response in there, by the way. And if you do all of that, um, you should be good to go ahead and submit your uh, page and it should work. And again, I'm sorry that it was, was a really long video and it might have been quite complex. So if you get confused about anything, just leave a comment and I'll try my best to help. But I hope that's made it a bit easier to do.